How the United States Armed Forces operate is one phenomenon the entire public is yet to completely unravel. Although the public has some information pertaining to affairs in the Department of Defense, not all their mode of operations and technologies used in the country's warfare are revealed. Speaking of such technologies, the new SR-72 high-performance aircraft, which was recently spotted accidentally, is one of them. Without a shadow of a doubt, the spotting of this aircraft is a breach of the United States Armed Forces and could be detrimental to how they operate going forward. So what does the aircraft look like? And how does the US Army intend to use it? Join us as we explore how this woman accidentally photographed Lockheed Martin's new SR-72 high-performance aircraft. The aircraft in the United States Air Force is a marvel to see when in action. These machines depict a sense of swiftness and supreme intelligence. With a significant part of the United States budget heavily invested in the military, their armed forces are not one to contest with. Despite the unique machines and innovations being utilized in the Army, more are being designed. However, they're not always revealed to the public until after completion. One such unique innovation is the new SR-72 high-performance aircraft. The new SR-72 high-performance aircraft is being constructed by one of the private aerospace sectors in the U.S., Lockheed Martin. The Lockheed Martin Corporation is an American aerospace, defense, arms, information security, and technology corporation with a worldwide outreach. It's also one of the largest defense contractors and political donors in the United States. Being one of the major contractors facilitating projects awarded by the U.S., Lockheed Martin became the talk of the town when the, one of the vice presidents of Lockheed announced that the company was working on a new project to fit the requests of the U.S. Air Force. What other demands would be made by the U.S. Air Force if it isn't a piece of machinery that surpasses the Blackbird SR-71, the world's fastest military jet? Of course, the vice president introduced plans for the Blackbird's successor, the SR-72. This time, a significant upgrade is being done to the Blackbird's successor, as the mission is to surpass Blackbird SR-71's capabilities. Judging from the photograph taken accidentally by this American woman, the plans and work put into the aircraft's construction to break new records were successful. As a successor to the SR-71, it's often regarded to as the son of the Blackbird. This unique SR-72 is a new hypersonic demonstrator aircraft developed by Lockheed Martin under its Skunk Works or Advanced Development Programs. Initial news emanating about the SR-72 before it was finally unveiled was that Lockheed Martin's Skunk Works had its hands on a project whose outcome would be a crewless hypersonic strike aircraft named SR-72. The hypersonic strike aircraft was crafted to move swiftly in the clouds at six times the speed of sound. This means the SR-72 moves twice the speed of the company's famed SR-71 Blackbird surveillance airplane. Not only does the SR-72 move at such an incredible speed, better than its predecessor, but the hypersonic aircraft SR-72 is also equipped with hypersonic missiles. With this tremendous speed and unique machinery embedded in the hypersonic aircraft, the SR-72 can penetrate any airspace that denies entry. It can also strike almost anywhere across the continent in less than an hour. The details about the SR-72 were relayed by Brad Leland, Lockheed Martin's hypersonics program manager. He cemented his points further about the aircraft being a hypersonic jet by saying, speed is the next aviation advancement to counter emerging threats in the next several decades. The technology would be a game changer in theater, similar to how stealth is changing the battle space today, he said. Creating this new hypersonic aircraft is a huge achievement, as Skunk Works and Aerojet Rocketdyne have worked tirelessly over the past several years to develop a method that integrates an off-the-shelf turbine engine. This technology also comes with a supersonic combustion ramjet to power the SR-72 from a standstill to Mach 6. That's why the SR-72 design leverages the company's work on the Defense Advanced Research Project's Agency Falcon program which flight-tested the rocket-launched hypersonic technology vehicle 2, as stated in the release. Even before Brad Leland dropped his point of view, Lockheed Vice President Jack O'Banion had already sparked rumors of the high-performance hypersonic jet after he projected an artist's conception of the SR-72. He launched this artist's conception during a talk at the yearly SciTech Forum of the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics, which took place in Florida. 
During his presentation at the forum, O'Banion stood by the image of the sleek, gray aircraft where he reportedly spoke about recent advances in computing and design. He then ended his presentation saying that the plane shown in the image could not have been made without the advent of digital transformation. The success of the high-performance SR-72 is a massive feat to all staff and officials at Lockheed Martin because the company has been making several attempts to come up with a new successor to the SR-71 since the year 1998. Despite all their efforts, they could not develop such a high-speed aircraft until the hypersonic aircraft came into the picture. One factor contributing to the SR-72 high-performance aircraft was the development of a rocket-launched hypersonic technology vehicle 2 aircraft headed by Lockheed Martin Skunk's work. The rocket-launched hypersonic technology vehicle 2 aircraft was a part of the Defense Advanced Research Project, Agency's Falcon Research and Development Project. The HTV-2 project was developed to collect data on aerothermal effects, aerodynamics, and guidance, including navigation and control. After its successful development, its maiden flight was conducted in April 2010. 10, and another flight was conducted in August 2011 to test its efficiency. The vehicle attended a maximum speed of Mach 20, which is equivalent to 13,000 miles per hour. All the experience and factual data obtained from the HTV-2 project were then utilized to create a better design for the hypersonic SR-72. The SR-72 cannot be any lesser than its predecessor, the iconic SR-71, hence the hypersonic technology. The high-performance aircraft has also combined cycle propulsion system that merges a supersonic jet engine with a rocket engine. This hypersonic jet is the first of its kind, and it's a beautiful sight to see when the hypersonic technology we all awaited to witness for the last 20 years is now mature and integrated into what is known as a critical player in the technology supporting the world's fastest aircraft. Even the United States Air Force is delighted after this development because such technology with impeccable capability would bring better efficiency in their warfare. The SR-72 slide down by O'Banion back in 2013 was the digital transformation that gave Lockheed the ability to design a three-dimensional scramjet engine. Scramjet is a ramjet air-breathing jet engine where combustion happens at supersonic speeds. During his presentation, O'Banion noted that five years ago, Lockheed Martin couldn't have made this engine itself because if it did, it would have melt down into slag. But with the help of peculiar digital transformation, the company could digitally print the engine with a spectacular and sophisticated sophisticated cooling system, and this cooling system is then integrated into the material of the machine itself that can have the engine last for multiple firings for routine operation. After the presentation by O'Banion, Lockheed Martin did not respond to any further requests for comment on the SR-72's production, as they also declined to answer any further questions. Even the United States Air Force declined to answer any questions, showing just how discreet and ultra-secret the project is. However, there were more clues about the existence of the hypersonic jet and those clues came in the form of reports saying that Lockheed Martins might test an optionally piloted flight research vehicle in 2018 and an actual test flight in 2020, which both happened at the stipulated times. And when we go back to the SR-72, one of its features is the unmanned feature, which is integrated due to the enormous speed at which the hypersonic jet would be flying. Remember Mach 20? That's 13,000 miles per hour. There are also sightings and reports from other people allegedly saying that they caught a glimpse of last year of a demonstrator vehicle that may have been linked to the SR-72. As a matter of fact, mysteries about the high-performance SR-72 aircraft run more profound than we think. In perhaps a more far-fetched development, an American man named Tyler Glockner, who runs a popular YouTube channel about aliens and UFOs called Secure Team 10, recently uploaded a video of images from Google Earth that he proposed looked like a hypersonic aircraft. And what other craft here on Earth has the hypersonic feature apart from the high-performance SR-72? The satellite images were captured outside a Pratt & Whitney building, which is not a part of Lockheed Conglomerate. Another reason people believe the SR-72 already exists is when Lockheed Martin announced a successful hypersonic scramjet test conducted in March of 2022. It was a successful flight of the hypersonic air-breathing weapon concept. However, the flight's success was not reported until the next month, so as to reduce the tensions between the US and Russia. The Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, Aerojet Rocketdyne, and Lockheed Martin conducted it. This test was the second success of the hypersonic air-breathing weapon concept program, but the first of the Lockheed Martin scramjet system. A previous success was made in September of 2021. That success test came with the same HAWC program, but had also leveraged a Northrop Grumman-sourced scramjet. One thing that these tests prove about the hypersonic SR-72 is that the U.S 
is leading the tracks when it comes to fielding weapons that utilize these high-speed air-breathing propulsion systems. The United States has committed to only developing conventional non-nuclear hypersonic weapons, which creates challenges not found in the obstruction systems fielded by Americans' contenders. Perhaps the most significant one is targeting nuclear weapons with huge blast radius, allowing for less accurate weapons. A conventional hypersonic missile has to be far more accurate to destroy its proposed target. Even though these non-nuclear hypersonic weapons can be tactically valuable, they're also costly. This has led to some people questioning the value of developing these missiles in the first place. After all, hypersonic technology is deemed exceptional because of its ability to defeat air defenses. Still, the same can be accomplished through high volume of slower moving, less expensive systems. If you overwhelm an enemy's air defense capabilities, some of your missiles will find your target even when talking about subsonic cruise missiles like the Tomahawk. Still, a hypersonic aircraft like the High Performance SR-72 can take lower moving weapons into enemy airspace at hypersonic speeds, preventing interception as missiles do. Such an aircraft could deploy a low-cost conventional payload, scramjet out of danger's way to land, and then rearm itself. By doing so, all the offensive capabilities of hypersonics are achieved achieved without depositing a shiny new scramjet in the foundation of your proposed target's base. However, the U.S. Air Force's latest hypersonic development program, also known as the Mayhem program, is directed toward constructing bigger scramjets capable of flying larger payloads several times. It seems like Lockheed Martin has a hand in the project. When we say the SR-72 is the son of the SR-71 Blackbird, how powerful do you think the SR-72 will be, being a replica of the iconic SR-71? Let's give you an insight. During the Cold War, SR-71 was well known for its capability to fly, fly higher and faster than any other military aircraft. Even 55 years after its maiden flight, it still holds this incredible record. This aircraft was designed discreetly in the late 1950s, and one of its greatest moments was the ability to fly up to the point of cruising near the edge of space and outfly a missile efficiently. The Lockheed SR-71 holds the record for the highest horizontal flight altitude and the fastest non-rocket-powered aircraft speed. Its official name was the Lockheed SR-71, but it was named the Blackbird by pilots and officials facilitating the military jet. The SR-71 was part of a family of spy planes built to explore enemy territories without being shot down or detected. The Blackbird was one of the military aircraft used before the advent of satellites and drones. The aircraft's color, which is distinctively black, was designed to to diminish heat. This black paint job was one of the factors that earned it that nickname of Blackbird, including the sleek line and long fuselage. The plane's design looked as unique as the structure had ever been produced before. Still, it did not lose any of its brilliance after several decades. Even those that marvel at the plane's uniqueness cannot help but leave comments about this plane's unique concept. One such person that idolizes the SR-71 is Peter Merlin, an aviation historian and author of Design and Development of the Blackbird. In a phone interview, Merlin talked about the Blackbird, saying it still looks like something from the future, even though it was designed in the 50s. Because of how the fuselage bends and the wing curves and twists, it looks more organic than metal. Most conventional airplanes look like someone built them. This one almost looks like it was grown. Because the aircraft was designed to fly faster than 2,000 miles per hour, friction with the surrounding atmosphere would heat the fuselage to the point that it would melt a conventional airframe. That made its manufacturer source for better material, so they opted for titanium, a metal that could withstand high temperatures and was lighter than steel. However, integrating titanium into the Lockheed SR-71 brought more problems. This was because a new set of tools, which are also meant to be of titanium properties, has to be created. These tools had to be fabricated because regular steel destroyed the brittle titanium as they came into contact with one another. Also, finding the titanium itself? That proved to be tricky. At the time, the USSR was the biggest supplier of titanium in the world, so it put the US government in a tight spot, so to speak. However, the U.S. government found a way around this difficulty as they brought a massive amount of titanium for the aircraft regardless. How the U.S. government was able to do so remains a mystery, but there are theories speculating about the massive amount of titanium was probably obtained using secret companies. When the titanium was eventually bought and the aircraft produced, they were flown completely unpainted, displaying a silver titanium skin. The SR-71 aircraft were flown that way until 1964 when the officials figured out that black paint absorbs and emits heat efficiently 
it would help reduce the entire airframe's temperature. A black paint job was done, converting the silver titanium and establishing the aircraft name, the Blackbird. And with these incredible records set by the SR-71 Blackbird, would the SR-72 high-performance hypersonic jet go above and beyond? Let us know what you think in the comments section below.